What is going on everybody? Welcome to another blue E34 video. So before we get into the SVD2 swap, there's been a few exterior things that I wanted to iron out on this car, some things that have been bugging me, and I've been wanting to take care of them before I get all into the swap and all that stuff, because that's a lot more involved. So I messed up the original intro to this video, so we're just gonna jump in from here to the original part where I was talking about everything that we do in this video. I'm going to be doing some PDR, fixing the gas door. I already did this trim, I got impatient, so this is where the front bumper was nicked. I already did the new trim with the new reflector. But we are also going to be doing the new headlight lens, and maybe if I have one, a new fog light. That one's cracked. This one's really clean, and these early model headlights are different. Um, fogs are different than the later ones. I know I have later ones. I don't know if I have early ones, so maybe I convert. I found this in the new parts car, a front plate delete. Already swapped that on there. Why not? But the main thing is, this car is actually going to get a PDR, and that is something that I've never done on one of my cars before. Because as I've said in prior videos, I don't like other people touching my cars, and PDR is not something I can do. So I went today and got a quote with a PDR guy local to me, and I was expecting it to be outrageous because of kind of just the number of dents on the sides, like of that quarter panel dent. And it was actually an astonishingly cheap price. And he even said he'll like polish up some like um, you know imperfections in the paint, like scuffs and stuff. So like I I'm amazed. So the appointments for tomorrow. We're gonna be dropping this thing off, and then when we get it back, this should be a almost completely dentless car. He told me it's old paint, some of these things he's not gonna wanna mess with because the chance of cracking the paint. But the main things I want done is the dimple in the hood right here. You can see there's one right there, and then one right there. Those are the main things that bother me. I can't stand those. Then there's some other dents on the hood that he said he'll take care of. And the second one that bothers me is this big one on the quarter panel that I showed you guys before. So it starts about here, down to here, right on the body line. It's an ugly, big old dent. Usually dents don't really bother me. Like, like this actually sides pretty straight. Like little door dings and stuff like that, I usually ignore. But this is hideous, and the dimples on the hood just absolutely kill it because you're looking at the car, and they just, they just jump right out at you. So aside from that, this door is riddled with a few Nothing, I can't really pick them up on camera. Maybe you could kind of see one right there that's hitting the light. So he told me he's gonna hit this whole door for me and basically do everything that he said he can. Um, but I just said, as long as those get done and the quarter panel gets done, I'm fine. Whatever else he can do is cool with me. All right, and the E34 is back from paintless dent repair and I am stoked. So we're in the garage because the neighbor's cutting the grass and it's loud, but I need to get this filmed right now. So. No daylight, but we don't need that. I have pictures of before and after. I'll lay those on over the video. But I didn't give you guys the price beforehand because he told me the price was a rough estimate, which I figured because, if you remember, big quarter panel and two bad dump dimples on the hood, the passenger back door scattered with probably six or seven. The trunk allegedly had like 10 of them. I never even noticed. This door had a decent one that is no longer there. But anyway, that got quoted, that one on the quarter panel, $230 by itself. And I said, oh, that's not good because that is one out of probably 20 dents on this car. And I was like, this is going to get really expensive. So he quoted that $230 and then I was like, all right, well, I got dimples on the hood and I showed him around. And he said, all right, listen, I'm going to get this in the shop and put a light on it and I'm going to find all the dents. And he said, let's call it $350 bucks for now. It might go up depending on how much I find. And I said, that is totally fine by me. I was honestly expecting to probably go in and pay upwards of a thousand bucks for all these dents. Cause sometimes PDR, it says like a hundred dollars for a one inch dent. And if a car has 21 inch dents, I mean, that's insane. I think they kind of hook you up on the price if you give them like a lot to do or whatever. But anyway, you would think it was a sketchy place. I mean, this is a five star place local to me. And that quote blew my mind. But when it was all said and done, it ended up being $400, so it went up 50 bucks, but that's literally because he told me the trunk had a ton of dents in it. He even buffed out some of the deep like paint transfer from the dents, like that door had a lot of, I think, what would have been door dings, and there was a few like paint transfer marks, and he even buffed most of those out for me. Like there was really bad marks right here, you could still see them a little bit, but like it was way worse. They were all over the door. But so like, this is the passenger door now, it is almost perfect. Uh, I think like with PDR, at least the way you kind of uh, 
how you can do it with old cars, like we have to go in from the back. It's you kind of can see like residual like slight waviness from where the dents were, but they are nowhere near what they used to be. And this door looks amazing. He said that fender right here, there's a dent right here that he wasn't able to do because the quarter gets really thick right there. He told me from the start, he said, not everything I can get out of this car because it's old paint and a lot of times what they like to use for PDR is like, I don't even know what it is. It's like an adhesive that they put on the outside and they pull it. He said with old single stage paint like this, he won't do that because he doesn't want to have to pay for a paint job when the paint cracks. And I appreciate that from him because I would rather have a few dents here and there than need something painted. But that door came out fantastic. This side was pretty much clean otherwise. You guys remember the hood had those nasty dimples on it and I mean like horrible, like so ugly. I think one was right here because you could see where the paint's kind of a, uh, it's got like some creases in it. Then the other major one was right here, right on the body line, if you guys remember. And I mean, you can see it was right there. Look at that. The body line is perfectly there. There is no evidence of a dent there. I'm so stoked about that. So if you're skeptical about PDR, this is me telling you, go ahead and do it. I'm so thrilled with this. This really brought this car the extra mile for me. Now I have a clean chassis, paint correction later down the road, not in a rush to do it right now, like I said, especially with going on a road trip. But the dent thing is a big thing for me, really makes me happier with this car. So now I can go into my swap and feel better. But now that that's done, we are going to get into fixing the gas door. I've already filmed that, so I'm just gonna throw those clips in. And after that, we will get into fixing my headlight lens. As part of our maintenance on this car, I gotta do a fuel cover door because as you can see, this one's broken. Someone asked for this, I wasn't even gonna film it, but if you need to know how to do this, then I'm gonna help you guys. So this is a $40 OEM part. I was feeling cheap and I went with the like $8 eBay one. I have used one of these before, but a lot of people say a lot of bad things about them. So it's kind of a hit or a miss. We're gonna see right now if this one works or not. I may end up just having to buy an OEM one but let us see. So to get the old one out, and it looks like this one might have been glued once upon a time, I believe we're just gonna yank it and break it. Yep, exactly. So now you can see we are left with two of the uh, broken parts of the hinge. This one was broken right off the rip. There's two little things here, two little tabs that you push. Okay, we got one out. Now let's try this top one. Yeah, so actually the easiest way to do it is to just shove your screwdriver in it forcefully and it'll just break it. And then you can pull it out with whatever you can make do. I mean, it literally just shattered. All right, so there we go, that's ready. Now you wanna come back over to the gas door and there is the metal hinge. So that's like a spring. You just open up the, the cap, you uh, spin it, and it'll, it'll pop off. And then this, you push the screwdriver in to the back, and you push with your thumb that way. So you can see as one motion there. So now it's crooked because I got it pushed out. Now this one, same thing. Push it in, lift up, and push out. Sorry, that might have been a little bit off camera. And then it pops out like that. You got your gas door, and now let's get this new hinge. You want to slide it in like this. It follows basically the design on the door. You could see the same shape. Um, just gonna go ahead and line this up. A few moments later. They were right. They were all right. I've been messing with this for probably like 25 minutes. I hate to admit it. So the things that slide in there, on this aftermarket one, I didn't understand what the reviews were saying. They're like, oh, it's not molded right, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. There's like there's like inside pieces to it. I, it's hard to explain, I can't show you. That basically slots through there. They're pretty much too wide on this uh, on this fake one, so or this oh, uh, aftermarket one. So they don't really fit. So I took a razor blade to it to try to thin it out, cut my thumb. It's not worth it. Spend $45, get the OEM one. This was way too frustrating for what it was. 
and it probably won't last as long as an OEM one. It definitely won't. So that was stupid. Never again in my life am I going to get an aftermarket one and try to save $30. That was just pointless. So anyway, don't forget your metal clip. Again, very frustrating. So you want it in this little tunnel here, not just on the black, but into the metal of the gas door. And then you want it on the, ow, that just sprung right into my thumb. And then you want it on this lip of the hinge. You don't want it here because it won't work. You want it here. So you can see then it springs it and then it springs it back. So now this should go in fairly easy. In and then you pop it. And just like that, we got a brand new eBay garbage gas door, but it works. And for our next and final exterior aspect on this video, we are going to replace this headlight lens. You can see right here there's a crack which has let water get in, so now it's all foggy. I think it's kind of hard to see on the lens right now, but yeah, the bottom there's a little yellow. Ugly, I've been dreading doing this for one reason. This whole front end, never been apart, right? The body lines are perfect. Like You see that? That is so hard to line up on these cars. It never looks good on most of them. It is perfect on this car. That means the front plates never come off. And to do this lens replacement, you have to get the headlights out. Or maybe not out, but you have to get the trim out. And to get this trim out, you have to get the front grill out. So that means I'm going to have to try to dismantle this front end. And I'm really nervous about that, because if it doesn't go back together perfectly, I'm going to be very sad. So I went up in the E34.net page and looked up how to get this out. Usually I just kind of rip it on parts cars. I just force it out. Apparently there's actually a right way to do it. I'm going to show you guys. There's some clips here, clips here. And then uh, these are the outer ones are the ones I'm scared about. So I got lenses from the previous owner. I've never looked at those. Let's go see what those look like. So I'm interested to see if he actually got like the right things. Ooh. Brand new, it looks like. So these are not OEM because OEM is NFL. And these are appear to not have a brand. But it looks like. It's, uh, I think maybe this is the low beam one. Let me see what the other one looks like in here. You got two. No, they're the same. So they're not, they're not perfectly identical. I mean, they are, they do have this look, but this has like squares on it. This has like round. You could kind of see like the, the circle there, which appears to me as if this would be more of a uh, projector E34 headlight. This has the early model headlights, and I thought about just upgrading to the projectors because I have a set, but I'm not really sure if I want to do that. Okay, I got the security screw, so now these just up and out, and then in here is two tabs that you have to push down that go into that middle support. Oh, I got it. So those are on their way out, and now we gotta go to the back from the inside and kind of get these things. Apparently you just do it with your hand and you push them down. Let's see. Can I just say how much I love having a tripod now? All these adjustable heights, it's so nice for filming. So we got one of these is a push pin, so that's been replaced. And the other one is a Phillips that you just twist a quarter of a turn. No. All right, so there's your headlight backing. Rare of an E34 to actually have that, but and now we go in here, and apparently there is a clip that we push down. The metal trim extends out to the corner lights. You need to look between the trim and the bumper slit for the two plastic tabs that hold it in place. You need to reach the clip in the middle of these two clips from the inside behind the headlights. Use your hands for this because you will be blind and your fingers could feel what you are touching. Unhook the top clips with your fingers. Okay. So it's talking about right here and here, there's two tabs. And apparently you have to push down from the inside to get those out. I've been doing this wrong all along. I always used to do it from here. So let's see how I can get my hand back there because as you can see you're fighting with the washer tank and the headlights 
which makes this in- extremely difficult. Yeah, I think I feel it. Oh, yep, I got it. Okay, so that, there's actually a realistic thing that you're able to push that doesn't break this. I've never done this. I believe the tab is like right there, and it's part of this surround, and it just sort of unclips this, somehow randomly unclips this, and it comes out really nicely. So now we gotta do that on the other side, and then this should clip back in perfectly fine because I didn't break anything. So good thing I read that, because there's actually a realistic way to pull this out without breaking all the clips. That is really hard to find. It's really hard to get your hand where it needs to go. And they were right. You have to do it blind and just feel for it. I found the other side a lot faster. So now, oh, it just, just pops out like that. And there's the clips that you have to push down right there and right there. And the black plastic will stay intact. Everything here is still good. So that's a good thing. Not as bad as I always thought. I'm gonna clean this up because there's just a lot of dirt. This car like sat a while and it's just like got like stained dirt everywhere. So this will get a nice cleaning. Having all the headlight trims and alternator cooling duct and stuff adds like a lot of time to this because those are the hardest things to get out. It's insane. Sometimes I like my cars that don't have any of the original stuff in them. So these are just a bunch of Phillips that usually strip. I do this all the time with parts cars and I'm just not gentle with things but when it's a car that you can't break this stuff on it is extremely nerve-wracking like terrifying. So stupid they use literally they use plastic screw heads and it just makes for a disaster. Okay, and then there's one there under the corner light, which is uh, the only metal one. Just slide out. And there you have it. And I'm going to clean this up as well. Such a tough decision. Originality or originality, but a little updated. I've had a hard time deciding. I asked a few friends who I respect their opinions, and they said just go to these. So I think. We are going to change our plans here, and instead of replacing this lens, we are just going to upgrade to the later style projectors. The only real difference is the circle, which I guess is the projector. All the connections in the back are the exact same, so I don't know if it's just the way that ball projector is, if it's uh, just the technology um, makes the light look different, but otherwise it's the same bulb, no different wiring, nothing like that. I wish I had Euro smileys to put on this, but I don't, and I don't really care to do that right now. Um, that's maybe a later down the road upgrade. Right now we're just doing the initial things. So I think we're just going to be upgrading to these. Lens replacement's kind of a pain on this. What you have to do is, for those watching that were hoping to see this, I'm sorry, but all you have to do is get that chrome trim ring off, it just pops off, and then you can see that tab let me set this other one down hold on that tab right there there's a couple of those around the headlight you have to heat this up with a heat gun and it's all like silicone and then pry these tabs and you can pry the lens out so it's not crazy but then you need silicone to put the new one in and honestly I'd be more hyped about doing this if these were OEM lenses that actually you know had the branding and the same style I think that this would just look off and I think that that would just bother me and if I'm this far I might as well because honestly the hardest part is getting that thing off and those the headlights just these two uh, bolts right there or screws one there and then one from the inside and they're out and then just undo the connections so I think we're just going to go ahead and upgrade so stand by I will be pulling out these headlights. It slides right out, I guess I got to close my hood. All right, and undo the corner light. These corner lights will be staying because they're cleaner than the ones that are on it. And oh, you hear that? All the broken glass is inside. So I gotta get a new bulb because this one is destroyed. Out with the old, in with the new. I'm doing this with the camera inverted, very confusing. So I think this is a nice little facelift for the E34. Something I wouldn't really care to do, but um, 
the cracked lens made it kind of justified it and the parts car coming with a mint set of these also justified it i never buy these i would just buy halos or um, not halos definitely not halos um smileys but i have these so let's just use them So while I'm doing the headlights and I have the trim out, it would be silly to not make these look nicer. You see how faded they are. They're more gray than they are black. Now if you're gonna do this, there's one option. And this is the only option. The SEM trim black. This stuff is the best match to an OEM finish on these. This is the nicest paint you can get for this. This is just what you should do. So I went all the way out and got this. Uh, never done this. I've always been very, uh, very not attentive to detail on my E34s. I always let this stuff keep neglected or be neglected, but I'm finally gonna change my ways here. So I picked up some of this stuff. It's like 20 bucks, $18 or so. It's kind of expensive, but this is the industry standard. So this is the best stuff. So let's go ahead and spray these. I clean them thoroughly. I wiped them down with alcohol. So they should be pretty good. Super windy outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this in the garage next to my M3, because why not? Let this air out and then we'll do a couple other coats. Okay, I lied. I ended up covering my car with a sheet. I don't know. And here is the trim in the sunlight. This looks amazing. So this is nearly, well not the back, I didn't do the back, but this is nearly exactly how the OEM finish looks on these when they're brand new. Perfect, like satinish black. Definitely recommend this stuff. Came out super good. These are gonna look amazing on the front end. That's one of the things, like I said, always tend to neglect this, but looks really nice as a side note when it comes time to do the driver's side headlight bmw was a jerk about this car and that one that you have to do from the back just so happens to be right where the charcoal canister is and you have to get it like this right even a stubby screwdriver won't get there i couldn't figure out how to do it so what i did was get a flathead drill bit and then a wrench and i taped it so that it wouldn't slide out and then you have to go at it like this. That's the best way to do it. I couldn't think of any way else to do it. The one horrible design flaw in this car to get the driver's side headlight out, total pain in the ass. But we got it. Now it's time to replace with that one and then everything will be back together. I couldn't not do the center grills. They don't fade as badly as these, but it would really irritate me having this not the same color. And yes, I know you may be wondering why the hell didn't you just take it out of the other faceplate? Well, those chrome rings, I'm nearly positive once those are in, they will not come out without breaking them. I've tried many times. If you really look at the clips on them, there is like no coherent way that it looks like they will come out without just breaking the, the black trim. And then I gotta buy a new black trim, risk breaking the chrome kidneys, risk, I mean, I, I didn't wanna deal with it. So I just taped it off very, very thoughtfully and uh carefully so this will now match and i'm very excited i'm letting this dry and then we'll finally put the front end back together and voila the front end is back together our body lines are perfect it went back in as it should because nothing broke luckily we have our updated headlights the projectors off the later model e34s everything wires right in everything's the same no issues, no modifications needed. We have our beautiful repainted trims, which makes just such a difference to the back end, or back end, to the front end of the car. It is beautiful. You really don't realize how like gross it looks 
when you have a bunch of faded trim, but it really ages the car. Like the fresh black does the car so many wonders, it's, it's amazing. I'm so happy I did this. Well worth a little bit of extra time this all took. But I mean, I couldn't be happier with the front end of this car now. We got no more cracked headlight lenses, nice looking headlights. To me, the older ones versus these ones isn't a huge difference, you know. It's not like a night and day difference to me of like which looks better or not. But I think it looks great. It's a nice little facelift to the car. If they have better lighting abilities, who knows, I'd imagine since they're newer. But I'm just happy with how the black trim came out. Really good stuff that... SEM trim paint uh, now I kind of want to do the bumper trims as well but the problem with that is that uh, then I feel like I gotta do everything and the lower bumper would be more faded than the upper trim and then I feel like that would just look horrible so I think I'm gonna stay away from doing that for now but otherwise we got our PDR done we got our bumper trims done headlights are done gas door is done this car is well on its way to be perfect. I couldn't be more excited. The exterior of this car is, may not seem totally transformed, but it really is. It looks a lot nicer than it did. Now I can justify getting into the swap. So the last bit of parts came, and now it's time to stop procrastinating. I've been a little bit nervous to do it, for no reason really, but now we have nothing else to do but do the swap. So give me a few days. I'm gonna probably grab the turbo car, make a video with that. I gotta part out that other E34, get that out of here, and then we're heading into the swap, finally. So there we have it, a few exterior mods, upgrades, facelifts on the E34. I'm happy with it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.